Bobby Drew Sinnott was an American 23-year-old pregnant woman who was unalived in Skidmore, Missouri in December 2004. The perpetrator, Lisa Marie Montgomery, then aged 36 years old, strangled Sinnott to unaliving and cut her fetus eight months into gestation out of her womb. Montgomery was arrested in Kansas the next day and charged with kidnapping resulting in unaliving, a federal crime. Sinnott's baby, who had survived the crude caesarean section, was safely recovered by authorities and returned to the father. Montgomery was tried and found guilty in 2007. She was executed by lethal injection shortly after midnight on the 30th of January 2021, having exhausted the appeals process. Montgomery became the first female federal inmate since 1953 to be executed by a United States federal government and fourth overall. Bobby Joe Sinnott was born on the 4th of December 1981 and graduated from Nordway Holt High School in Graham, Missouri in 2000. Sinnott and her husband run a dog breeding business from the residence in Skidmore. Sinnott and Montgomery had met through dog show events and had ongoing interactions in an online rat terrier chat room called Ratter Chatter. Montgomery told Sinnott that she was pregnant too, leading to the two women chatting online and exchanging emails about their pregnancies. On the 16th of December 2004, Montgomery entered Sinnott's house and murdered her by strangulation. Montgomery then cut Sinnott's unborn child out of her womb and fled the scene. There was no sign of forced entry. Authorities believe that Montgomery, posting as a customer, Darlene Fisher, had arranged to visit Sinnott's house on that day. It is known that Sinnott was expecting the arrival of prospective buyers for a terrier at her home in Skidmore at about the time of her murder. Sinnott was discovered by her mother, Becky Harper, lying in a pool of blood approximately an hour after her murder. Harper immediately called authorities and described the wounds inflicted upon her daughter as being as if her stomach had exploded. Paramedics were unsuccessful in attempts to revive Sinnott and she was pronounced dead at St. Francis Hospital in Maryville. Montgomery allegedly called her husband Kevin the same day at around 5.15pm saying that, on a shopping trip to Topeka, she had gone into labour and given birth. The following day, the 17th of December, police arrested Montgomery at her farmhouse in Melbourne, Kansas. A witness would later report that on the morning before the arrest, Montgomery took her, the infant, her husband and two teenage sons to a restaurant for breakfast. Police had initially gone to Montgomery's home after tracing online communications to her IP address hoping to interview her as a witness. When they arrived, they found the car matching the description of the one at the crime scene and, when they entered the home, found Montgomery inside holding the infant and watching television. Montgomery was arrested an hour later and after her story fell apart and she confessed. The kidnapped newborn, who she claimed was her own, was recovered and soon placed in custody of the father. The quick recovery and capture was attributed to the use of the forensic computer investigations which tracked Montgomery and Sinnott's online communication. The investigation was aided by the insurance of an Amber Alert to enlist the public's help. The alert was initially denied as it had not been used before in an unborn child's case and thus there was no description of the victim. Eventually, an intervention by Congressman Sam Graves, the alert was implemented. DNA testing was used to confirm the infant's identity. Lisa Marie Montgomery resided in Melvin, Kansas at the time of the murder. Montgomery's mother's alcohol addiction led to Lisa being born with permanent brain damage. She was raised in a physically, emotionally and actually abusive home where she was allegedly outwarded by her stepfather and friends and beaten from the age of 11. Lisa's older half-sister, Diane Mattingly, was removed from the home and placed in foster care. She sought mental escape through drinking alcohol. When Montgomery was 14, her mother discovered the abuse and reacted by threatening her daughter with a gun. Montgomery tries to escape by marrying at the age of 18, but both her first marriage and second marriage resulted in further abuse. Montgomery had four children before she underwent tubal litigation in 1990. She falsely claimed to be pregnant several times after the procedure, according to both her first and second spouses. At the time of her arrest, authorities speculated that Montgomery's motivation stemmed from a miscarriage she may have suffered and subsequently concealed from her family. Prosecutors allege that her former husband planned to reveal that she had lied about being pregnant in an effort to get custody of her children, speculating that Montgomery needed to produce a baby to counter this charge of habitual lying about pregnancy. Montgomery was charged with a federal offence of kidnapping resulting in death, a crime established by the Federal Kidnapping Act of 1932 and described in the Title 18 of the United States Code. If convicted, she faced a sentence of life imprisonment or the death penalty. At a pre-trial hearing, a neuropsychologist testified that head injuries which Montgomery had sustained some years before 
could have damaged the part of her brain that controls aggression. During her trial in federal court, her defence attorneys, led by Frederick Duract, asserted that she had pseudocysis, a mental condition that causes a woman to falsely believe she's pregnant and exhibit outward signs of pregnancy. According to The Guardian, Durack attempted to follow his line of defence only one week before the trial began after being forced to abandon a contradictory argument that Sinnott was murdered by Montgomery's brother Tommy, who had an alibi. As a result, Montgomery's family refused to cooperate with Durack and described her background to the jury. Dr V S Ramadran and Dr William Logan gave expert testimony that Montgomery had pseudocesis in addition to depression, borderline personality disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. Ramakandran testified that Montgomery's stories about her actions fluctuated because of a delusional state and that she was unable to dictate the nature and quality of her acts. Both federal prosecutor Roseanne Ketchmark and the opposing expert witness forensic psychiatrist Park Dietz disagreed strongly with the diagnosis of pseudocesis. On the 22nd of October 2007, jurors found Montgomery guilty, rejecting the defence claim that Montgomery was delusional. On the 26th of October, the jury recommended the death sentence. Judge Gary A. Fenner formally sentenced Montgomery to death on the 4th of April 2008. Dirac's pseudocysis defence, Montgomery's past trauma and separate diagnosis of mental illness were not revealed until after the conviction. This led to critics, including Guardian journalist David Rose, to argue that Durack provided incompetent legal defence for Montgomery. Fenner rejected Durack to be cross-examined in November 2016. Durack rejected all criticism and defended his conduct. On the 19th of March 2012, the US Supreme Court denied Montgomery's centauri petition. Montgomery, who was registered for the Federal Bureau of Prisons under number 11072, 031 was incarcerated at the Federal Medical Center at Cartswell in Fort Worth, Texas, where she remained until she was transferred to the site of her execution. For the duration of her time there, she was the only woman on federal death row. During her appeals, Montgomery's lawyers argued that she technically did not commit the crime of kidnapping resulting in death, claiming that Victoria Jo Sinnott was not considered a person until she was removed from her mother's womb. Accordingly, since Bobby had died beforehand, the crime was instead death resulting in kidnapping. The claim was dismissed, with the court saying that the felony murder rule nullified this and that Montgomery needed to kill Bobby regardless in order to complete the kidnapping. Experts who examined Montgomery after the conviction concluded that by the time of her crime she had been long living with psychosis, bipolar disorder and post-traumatic stress disorders. She was said to be often disassociated from reality and have permanent brain damage and numerous beatings at the hand of her parents and spouses. The case of Atkins v Virginia ruled that executing individuals with intellectual disability violates the Eighth Amendment to the United States Constitution regarding cruel and unusual punishments. Given this ruling, it could be expected that Montgomery was eligible for a death sentence. Very strong and undisputed evidence can lead to a withdrawal of the death sentence for a further inquiry into it. Montgomery was scheduled for execution on the 8th of December 2020 by lethal injection in the US penitentiary in Terre Haute, Indiana, but it was delayed. On the 23rd of December 2020, Montgomery was given a new execution date of the 12th of January 2021. The US District Court Judge Randolph Moss found that the director's order setting a new execution date while the court's stay was in effect was not in accordance with law, prohibiting the rescheduling of the execution before the 1st of January 2022. On the 1st of January, a three-judge panel in the US Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit vacated Moss's ruling, effectively restraining her execution date of the 12th of January. On that day, US District Judge Patrick Hanlon granted a stay of execution on the grounds that her mental competence must first be tested and it could be argued that she did not understand the grounds of her execution, per the Eighth Amendment to the US Constitution. The stay was then vacated by the Supreme Court via a 6-3 vote. The execution was ordered to be carried out immediately. She arrived in Terre Haute's death row on the 12th of January. Montgomery was executed by lethal injection on the 13th of January 2021 at the United States Penitentiary in Terre Haute, Indiana. When asked if she had any last words, she replied no. She was pronounced and alive at 1.31am EST. Montgomery became the first female federal prisoner executed in 67 years and the first woman executed in the United States since... Kelly Grishander 
in 2015 and the first person executed in the United States in 2021. Only three other women have been executed by the US federal government, Mary Stewart by hanging in 1865, Ethel Rosenberg by electric chair in 1953, Bonnie Hardy by gas chamber also in 1953. Montgomery's execution was followed a day later by Corey Johnson and three days later by Dustin Higgs. All three were carried out by the United States federal government, each being controversial for a variety of reasons. In her final days, Montgomery had kept a calendar marked with Joe Biden's inauguration date. Joe Biden had promised to enact a memoriam on capital punishment at the federal level. In 2023, one of Montgomery's attorneys admitted that Montgomery's legal team had briefly considered taking off her medication. She was on to stabilise her mental health. The intent was for Montgomery to go absolutely psychotic in a team's attempt to postpone her execution by proving mental fragility exacerbated by dual abuse in childhood. The attorney stated, Ultimately, we weren't going to do that to her.